So this is Andy Brown, he's the director of the London Metropolitan Orchestra and Andy is also the conductor of the score, Fast and Furious. Andy, can you just explain to the players out there how different it is to record a game score from a conventional cinema score for, for film, for example? Well, I think first of all, um, obviously you've got the, the picture element with the film that you don't have here. Uh, which is a lot of the constraints that we have from film scoring are, are the, the pitch sinks. Another major difference with um, game scoring as opposed to film scoring um, is that there's usually a lot of music, you yeah. know, that, that you have to go through all the permutations of the game, so the schedule is often quite tough. This particular one for Fast and Furious was very tough. It was a real challenge for the players in terms of what you wrote because it was very animated. It was almost all loud or very loud. It was fast. I can't remember an occasion previously when anyone in the orchestra, let alone the leader, managed to break two strings in one session. Absolutely. That's as fast and furious as we're talking <laughs> about. Also, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Because for, particularly for brass players and woodwind players, they need to be able to breathe and they have issues with um, sustaining lip pressure. Yes. So in terms of what you were saying about scheduling, that's really critical, isn't it? So within a, a four hour session, for example, you have to give them enough breaks to be able to sustain their, their lip. But also that poses problems for us on the other side because we're trying to fit in as much music to record as possible. So we had a Big brass section, uh, it was 18 players. Yeah. Uh, my memory is six horns, four trumpets, two tenor trombones, two bass trombones, and two tubers, one doubling chimbasso. What I do with the players is I say, okay, we're gonna go from a certain section, you know, bar 16 through bar 33, is that a, a suitable chunk? And that's the way we get through the music cues so that we can keep the energy, keep the sound. It's interesting, isn't it? This um, trend to record separately. So you have separate string sessions, separate brass sessions, and even separate woodwind sessions, of course. It gives you much more control at the mix stage, but do players really like it? It's sort of something that's happened in stages. I remember perhaps 10 to 15 years ago, it started to happen in the sense that you'd ha have the whole orchestra in the room and you would do a, a tutti recording and then you'd do strings only, the wind only, brass only, percussion only. Um, and that way you could get the performance assimilated, yeah. which would still be retained once it had been separated out. Of course, you don't get that when, you're, when the brass are on a separate call no, or the woodwind are on a separate call. So, that's where, you know, players, it becomes more of a challenge for the players.